Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer State. This is Coloring Bliss, and I'm going to share with you another one of my art products that I am working on collecting and moving towards the full set. I'm so excited about this. Let's talk about pan pastels. Before we get started with our pan pastels, I wanted to show you some art that you can come download at Coloring Bliss. This is a free for a limited time, fun St. Patrick's Day coloring page that I invite you to come and get so you can celebrate St. Patrick's. And then these next two are part, well, brand new art, part of our premium library. So these have been drawn by some of our Bliss artists and they are so awesome. Remember to come on over to Coloring Bliss and become a member for just five bucks a month. You get access to hundreds of coloring pages like this. So much fun and such a great way to support us here at Coloring Bliss. So thanks to some of my followers who have generously sent me some of these pan pastels, I have a bit of a collection already started. I've been keeping them here in these pastel drawers that you can purchase, and I've been organizing them by color, but my collection, I felt like there were some holes in the colors that I needed. So I recently put in an order at Dick Blick to get some more colors to fill out my sets. So let's talk about how to collect pan pastels, what are pan pastels, what do you need to get into pan pastels, and I'll show you what I purchased to help with my collecting. Pan pastels are an artist grade, high quality, soft pastel. That means it's sort of like chalk. Think blush, think eyeshadow. That's the kind of thing that we are looking at here. They've been around for a really long time and they have really cool tools that work with them and they're just very unique as you can see here. They are quite expensive and that's why it's taken me time to get myself into them more and buy more sets and more colors. So in all there's I believe 92 different colors and then they also have mediums that work with them or products that accompany those colors so that you can get more out of your colors. And they're organized by um, color families. So they'll have an actual color like this Hansa yellow right here which is considered the pure color and then paired with it they'll have a tint, they have a shade. So a tint is a color plus white, a shade is a color plus black and then they have an extra dark for every single color in their line and there is a ton of beautiful colors that you can pick from. They have charts that you can download and help you um, or help you as you're collecting them so that you'll know which colors you still need. Now the products themselves, and by the way, I'm not sponsored by Pan Pastel. I'm just sharing with you one of my cool tools that I love to collect. Now they sell these um, Pan Pastels in sets, so you don't have to just buy them one at a time, or you can if you want to. They also have tools, they have these cool plastic trays that the pans themselves fit in, and then they have actual tools right here that help you with applying them to your art surface. So you can go in for the entire set or you can buy individual sets. Some of them are set up by actual artists and some of them are more thematic like this set right here that I picked up with this recent order. This is the Pam Pastel metallic set here. So I get six colors and we're going to get some tools mixed in. I'll show you when we open this up what you get when you buy these types of sets. So there's lots of ways to get into this, um, and it is a very different soft pastel. If you've worked with soft pastels before, they usually come in some sort of a stick or a half stick. Sometimes they look round, sometimes they look rectangular. That's more normal in the art world. A pan pastel is more like a blush where they have put that powder into a little disc. Let me show you. I'm gonna get rid of my iPad here and let's look at what I purchased together. So this is what I recently got from Blick. Like I said, you can buy the colors individually to help you build out your set. 
or in these types of sets here. The pans themselves look like this, and they come wrapped in plastic, they have a top, a screw on top, and on the back they tell you a lot of information. You get the color name, and you get to learn whether this is a tint or a shade in that line. All permanent reds have the number 340, and then you pair them up with whether it's the tint version of this color, or the shade, or the extra dark version of this color. So lots of really good information that you even have light fast information back here. Like I said, these are high grade, excellent artist quality tools here that are really fun to play with, highly pigmented. Okay, so if you take off the plastic, you end up with this cute little compact dish full of gorgeous color and it is super vibrant, very soft. I barely touch the surface and you get that much color off of it. It's so much fun to work with and these last a long time because a small amount goes a really long way. So these are the colors that I ordered and received from Blick. I've noticed that they made a little bit of a shipping mistake. This should have been the green pearlescent, and I got two blue pearlescents. So I'll contact them and get that straightened out. But they do have pearlescent type um, pastels, and they have metallic. And I needed pretty much the whole set of metallic, so it was cheaper by the pan to purchase them this way and get it in a full set. And when you do that, let me show you what this looks like. Comes in this really nice tower and you get this sheet of paper that shows you all the colors included in your kit. So that's really handy. And then they screw together you get a lid, and then here are the metallic colors, which I need to swatch. These are going to be gorgeous. We've got copper, we've got pewter, we have silver, and then in the middle here, they've given us a little cup with some of the tools that we'll talk about here in a minute. And then I also got rich gold. And finally, oh, two more. We have a light gold and we have bronze and some more tools to try. So this was all of their metallics, all in one big set. Now you only get one lid when you buy them in towers like this. When you buy them individually, each little pan has a lid. And I really appreciate the lids because the pastels are so soft. In fact, this one in shipping got broken up a little bit. You can see the crumbs rather than it being a solid pan. So I... The only problem with buying them in a little tower like that is that you don't get a lid for every color. Let me show you what it looks like when they break up. It's still usable, but it's just a little bit more messy. Let me show you this color here. See, it's all broken up rather than pressed in. Now I couldn't wait any longer, so I need to see these metallic colors swatched. So I grabbed a piece of paper that is meant for pastels and let's see how these colors look. Okay, so these are all the colors that I recently got, minus my pearlescent green, which I will contact Blick and get that taken care of. But I wanted to show you how reflective they are. So pretty, let me hold them up this direction here too so you can see how much they catch the light. They are so good with their shine, both the metallic line and the pearlescent. 
and you can see on the other colors that I got that I really needed some oranges and reds for my set that I'm working on and I love the colors I love how vibrant and vivid they are so much fun so storing and organizing your pan pastels can be a bit of a challenge. They are in these little compacts and they do stack nicely, but screwing them open and closed a lot can become tedious, especially when you're working with them. So I've really enjoyed using these pastel drawers to keep them organized, but as my collection is growing, I may need to change that up. I have recently seen on a Facebook coloring group, someone was organizing them into a big makeup bag and I thought that was a brilliant way to keep them all together. Quick update about our pan pastel issue. This is the green pan pastel that I didn't get in my first shipment. It's pearlescent green, beautiful color. So happy that I finally have it. It actually took them three shipments for them to get this to me. What happened is I called and said, you sent me two blues and I was supposed to have one blue and one green. And then I also told them about this one. Remember I showed you how this one got all crumbleified in shipping so what I did was tell them about that as well so in the second shipment they sent me the new one to replace that crumbly one and they sent me another blue so now I had two blues so I contacted them again and said oh no it happened again and so the lady was pretty awesome she put it together really well and um, made sure that I got my greens so I got one little green pan pastel in the shipment and she upgraded me to two day shipping so that I could have it and get going so now I have three blue and one green now eventually, of course, I'd like to have the full set and purchasing the full set all in one big shebang is the best way as far as price per pan to collect these. But if you're like me and you're doing the collection slowly, then um, the open stock is the way to go or these little sets where you can get multiples of the same kind in one set. That's a really good way to go too. So I wanted to show you once you do get a, you know, a full set of one color together, how they play out on paper. So I happen to have the full set of, you're not going to be surprised, the violet. <laughs> I have the dark shade, the shade, the full hue, and the tint. So what I'd like to do for you now is show you how they look together when you have all four colors, all four variations of one color. So let me swatch these out for you. All right, I swatched these four onto some gray pastel paper to help us see these colors really well. So we have everything from the tint, the pure hue, the shade, and then the extra dark version, which I think just has more black in it. You can also see how the numbering system works here. They all have the number 470, but after the decimal point is a different number indicating which color you have in your hand. So the point eights are all tints. The point fives are all the pure hue. The point threes are the shades, and the point ones are the extra darks. Now they also have additional products you can buy that help make your whole set do other things. So let's look at this tray right here. Here we have in both coarse and fine the pearl medium. So this mixed in with any of their standard colors will give you a pearlescent effect. So if you're trying to collect these slowly, a good idea is to get these pearlescent mediums so that you can mix into your other colors and get more bang for your buck. Now this right here is a colorless blender and it helps you smooth out and blend without adding extra tint or extra white into your product that you're working with. 
Now, right here is titanium white. And this one I highly recommend you get with your set because you can add white to any of your pure hues and get the tints. So you can avoid having to invest in the tints right at the beginning by mixing in the titanium white. So this one is really valuable and helpful as well. Now here we also have two more products and this is again a coarse and a fine and these are pearl mediums as well but instead of tinting the product to get a lighter pearl effect you get a darker pearl effect and it comes with the coarse and the fine in both the white and the black so that you can get a different effect depending on what you're going for. So these products are really fun to pick up. I'd also pick up a black because then you can create your own shades without having to buy the shade tone or the extra dark tone until you're ready to invest in those. Having all four colors, all four variations of one color is helpful and sort of like a shortcut. You don't have to do the mixing of the white to get the tint or the mixing of the black to get the shade. It's just there and ready for you already. So it's a very convenient thing. Next thing we need to talk about are the tools that you need to work with the pastels. Now, just like a, a normal soft pastel, if you wanna just dive in with your fingers and use those as your tools, that's just fine and great. You can also use cotton swabs and other types of tools that you may have around the house already. I have right here a little box where I keep a lot of my pastel tools. I actually have a whole drawer dedicated to just pastel tools. I have a little desk vacuum to suck up any extra crumbs because you don't wanna blow them into the air. Not all of these things are good if you aspirate them in and so you want to get rid of them into the trash as much as possible. That's kinda of hard to remember and learn but if you start out with that habit at the beginning of working with pastels, you're better off. So in this box I have a whole bunch of really fun simple little tools I collected around the house. I have tissues, cotton balls, I have cotton swabs, I have makeup wedges, I even have a little file, and then this is a little shield you can buy. It's a very thin metal and it lets you block and cover areas or it lets you erase certain areas very precisely. That's another nice little tool to pick up. Now I also have here a stack of these little thicker, wider, cups that come with some of the collections and they all have lots of different tools. So in the pan pastel world they have a tool line called soft. Soft with two F's. That's these right here. So this was another purchase that I made. I wanted to get more of the soft tools so that I could experiment with the different sizes and shapes. We're going to open this up and take a look at it and what you get in this big kit right here. And it was more um, price effective to buy the full kit than to buy the individual tools themselves. But as you can see, I already have a bunch of these tools that I've played with and they're washable so you can keep working with them and they're very different than most standard like this looks like a makeup wedge but it doesn't feel like a makeup wedge and it doesn't work exactly like a makeup wedge either. They also have these little things that look like eyeshadow applicators and again it looks like an eyeshadow applicator but it's not the same. Whatever fabric or um, latex, whatever this is on the end is very different. It's washable and it almost has, um, it's not sticky but a grippy um, sensation when you put your finger across it so it really picks up a lot of pan pastel and allows you to work with it. So they have lots of different styles and I want to take a look at them and show you what I'm thinking of using for organizing them although I don't know if it's going to work. We'll look at it together. So in addition to the soft tools that we're about to look at I also wanted to mention again that they make these 
plastic, they call them pallets, and they have a lid over them like this. So if you do have a bunch of pans that don't have lids, this is a great place to put them. And you can use these pastel pans, these pallets, in lots of different ways. Um, one of my favorite ways to do it is gather up the colors that I plan on using on a coloring page or on a background and uh, putting them all into one of these so that they stay together, they stay protected, and as I'm working with them, I can easily move the pans around and work with the colors straight out of this palette. You could also store them in this, um, so you could put all of the violets all together, all the metallics together, that kind of thing. So these are really handy, not absolutely necessary, but handy. All right, let's look at this collection of soft tools. So this says we have 44 tools in here, all for the use of pan pastels. Like I said, you can buy all of these individually as well. It was just more cost effective to buy them this way and I know I'm going to use them, so it was worth it for me. Now it shows back on the back here which tools we're going to get, what they're for, and um, maybe I can use some of the appropriate wording as we're working with these. So, open this up. Okay, we're calling these ones here art sponges. And I do have a few of these already. Um, that have come in the different little kits that I've purchased or received. But this has a few other shapes. We've got sort of a round shape, a rectangle, more pointed, and then the triangle. So I'm excited to try them all, and it looks like they have a few little tips of how to do it, and that you can wash them in warm water when you're done and just let them air dry. So that's pretty cool. Now, I also got this big one I was really excited about. So this is another art sponge. It's just really big and I'm excited to try it for backgrounds. See if I can blend out and get the different uh, effects I'm after using a bigger art sponge like that. And looks like we've got a few more art sponges. So these two sponges here are cut at an extreme angle and they're actually calling them an angle slice. So that's interesting. I'm curious to see what I can do with them. I like how it has sharp edges, big wide edges, and then a big flat edge as well. That should be really fun. Yeah, angle slice and angle flat, round and flat. Okay. I have three more packs to look at. Here is just a whole bunch of these little like makeup applicator looking things here. They call them the mini applicators. These are so good for little details. If you're trying to color in an eye or a specific spot in a, a, an illustration, these are really handy for that. And it looks like, let's go ahead and open this. Looks like these have come in a little holder. Oh, lost one. Oh yeah, they're in a little plastic holder. Don't know how useful that will be, but we'll see. Now here we have another type of applicator. They're calling this an applicator <laughs> with four heads. So you can swap this out and use them for probably per color. It would be probably smart to assign them a family like warm tones, cool tones, metallics, that kind of thing, so that you can sw quickly switch between the tips and keep working. That's cool. Now here we have, I believe these are called knives. Yeah, knives and the different covers for the knives. This is a really cool concept and I've never had one of these knives before, at least I don't think so. I've had the covers, but the knives are neat because they help with the angle that you hold the tool at so that you can spread the different pastels out at a more ergonomic angle. So they have different like covers for each knife, different shapes depending on which knife you're having and which what kind of uh, effect you're after. So that's what these are for. So cool. 
So I have been trying to think through how to organize all of these new tools that I was investing in. And I bought these little containers that I thought would be good to load up. They have um, parts that you can pull out and make one section bigger. But I don't know, I only have three of these. I don't know how well it's going to work as a storage solution. Guess we'll have to try. Well, my storage plan was only partially successful. Some of the little applicators fit in here perfectly and some not so much. So I think I need something a little bit bigger that I can put these bigger knives in because, oh, maybe it will fit in here. Maybe I gave up too soon. But these big ones right here are definitely not going to fit in here. Let me see if I can get the knives in. This works way better. So in this container, I have all these tools that work like this, a stick with an applicator at the end. And then in this container, I have all the knives and the covers for the knives. Look how good they fit. So happy with that. And then in this container, we have our art wedges or art sponges. Now the only ones I couldn't get to fit are my new big boys. And Mishka's upset about that. You can hear my cat in the background. Why couldn't we get these to fit? So um, the problem here is that these little trays, they only, this long piece is actually molded into it, so you can't remove it. You can only remove the smaller little dividers. So I'll have to find another solution for these big ones. But otherwise, I have all of my sponges and art soft tools for my pan pastels. So much better organized. I'll be able to clean them faster, put them away faster, and pull them out faster. I know for me, the key is having my art supplies out and easily accessible. If they're too put away, too packed into drawers, or not quickly found, I won't use them. I just will reach for something else. So for now, the way I'm going to keep these is I'll put the bigger sponges, take them out of their bags. Again, even having things in plastic bags like this will stop me from using them. Are you that same way? Do you have that same problem? <laughs> so I'm going to take them out and have them handy and ready. A place for everything, right? Oh, there's a few more little applicators that need to be put into my new bins. Okay, fix that up. I like having extra bins in here because I could put the dirty ones in, keep the clean ones separate. And finally, all I have a knife I can try and all the covers are organized and ready to go, somewhat organized. Okay, so these, I'm hoping, oh, they fit so good right there, look at that. Uh, not quite perfect though, maybe this one will have to go like that. So good, oh, I feel so organized and ready to do art. Speaking of doing art with these Pam Pastels, I'm so excited to do an art piece and show you what you can do with them, but I'm not going to do it in this video because <laughs> this video is more about what you need to collect and what you need to get started with your Pam Pastels and the new things I got. There's one more thing that's really important when it comes to pastels. Because this is a chalk-like product, it doesn't stick permanently to your paper. So you need Need something it's called a fixative that at the end you spray your piece of art with a fixative now you want to test this because I've run into some problems
problems where a fix stiff will actually change the final look so much as it almost made the product disappear on the paper when I sprayed it with the fixative. So I have been investing in higher end fixatives. This one's like a fine art by Krylon. I'm going to be trying a few others. This one I've had for a while and um, I've had a lot of people say it's a really good fixative, but my problem is that the sprayer nozzle spits the, the product rather than sprays it out in a nice mist. So I ended up purchasing this little mister bottle to help me with that problem so I'm going to try that out when I do some art with this and see which fixatives I'm most happy with and I'll share that information with you when I learn about it. I also wanted to give you an update on this little sprayer that I bought off of Amazon to try to help me with my spray issues with this Spectrafix. Now the awesome thing about this product at least that's the way they tell you to use it is it's an odor free all natural product to do your fixative issues. Now the problem I've had is this squirter creates large droplets and so from my research I was told to get one of these mister type sprays, put the stuff in it and shake it up and see if it will work. Now I've tried it on this piece of art right here, which I think turned out so pretty. Look at the shine with the pearlescence and metallics on the flowers. So pretty. So that was colored with the pan pastels? Yeah, this was all colored with pan pastels and then the final details to get the really good deep contrast and a couple little flicks on the petals were done with Prismacolor Scholar pencils. And I love how it turned out. I sealed it. Um, this has been sealed once for the background and then twice more once I was done. And you can see right here is the issue I am worried about. A large droplet hit right there, sort of as it dried it pulled and congealed the beautiful pastel into that weird spot. It happened all over. In fact, I'm going to put up a picture right now where I held the this piece of art in the light so you can see the droplets. That's the problem I'm talking about. This did not solve it. It's maybe a little bit better. I'm going to keep working with it. Ah, I'm determined to make this odor-free one work so I don't have to go outside and use the really stinky ones every time I need to seal a piece of art. So I hope this video helped give you a little glimpse into the pan pastel world. Whether you decide to try pan pastels or the stick chalk pastels, just remember that in general, this is a very messy art media. If you embrace that from the beginning, you'll be okay. Um, there's ways to lessen the mess, but in general, it is just a messy medium. So I'm really excited to play with them, make some art for you and show you how to use them. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about Pam Pastels or art products in general, make sure you subscribe. Take a minute right now. Scroll down, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on how to use fine art materials like this for coloring. It's a really fun world. It's open to you. You don't have to be afraid. You just need a little guidance and a little faith and some courage and you can do some really cool things with these art supplies. Can't wait to get started. Thanks for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye bye everyone. Mm -hmm. So pretty.